guys, it's Almost here, so welcome to another speed build. So today I am building another family home, and this time I am building a 1920s style mansion. And it's based off of the home that you can find in the mobile game app called June's Journey. And thank you so much to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. I am so excited that they invited me to be a part of this project, and I'm very excited to share this house with you guys. I am absolutely in love with it. I think it's such a unique home and I think the art style to June's Journey is just so beautiful and the game is just so inspiring. Like when you're done playing it, it's just like you're ready to build because there's so much inspiration and the story is just very captivating and interesting. June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game set in the 1920s and you follow the protagonist June who is a detective and she's trying to solve the mystery of who murdered her sister and brother-in-law and this is her childhood home and she moved back here to solve the mystery and she's staying here with her niece who unfortunately her parents were murdered and don't worry that's no spoilers you find out that immediately when you start playing but you can solve the mystery by looking at like hundreds of these beautifully painted images to find the clues and it's so cool and so inspiring like I said like I had so much fun looking through the images and trying to gain inspiration and ideas for this build it's not an exact replica of the mansion from the game um, because of course there's some limitations and stuff in The Sims 4 and certain things that we can't exactly replicate, but I tried my best and I think I really captured like the art style and just how colorful the game is, especially the beautiful images. They're very colorful and very unique. Like I don't think I would have ever made a home that looks like this without playing the game. So I can highly recommend it. You guys can download it for free in the description of this video. It's available on both Android and iOS. You can also play it on your PC through Facebook. So that's another option that I think is pretty cool. But anyways, I think it would be so much fun to play through the mystery and then also create the sims that you meet along the way and then play out the story in this house. I think it would be so much fun and I think the story would like work really well in the sims and just would be really fun storytelling and I don't know, I just think that would be so enjoyable. So let me know if you guys end up doing that and if you guys decide to build this mansion yourselves, I would love to see how that turns out. So definitely, um, yeah, link me on the gallery or tag me on Twitter or something. But anyways, here I'm doing something kind of interesting with the front of the house. I was trying to recreate to the best of my abilities, the entryway to the mansion. I also wanted to have a fountain and also a car in the driveway. I noticed in the images that there's a few different vehicles that you can see. And I noticed one of them had a yellow vehicle and we have one in the Sims. And so I thought this one worked pretty, pretty perfectly. Um, and then also I end up putting luggage on the top of it because I noticed some of the images had some like luggage and stuff. I imagine because June arrived at the mansion. And so I think those are her bags. That's what I'm guessing anyways. But anyways, um, yeah, here I'm building the front of the house and the front of the house had some like rounded features. Of course, we don't have rounded walls in the sims 4 but we do have rounded floors and so i used the rounded like platform tool to create this flooring here which i think actually looks really good and i would have never thought to do this before so yeah i just got so many great ideas i'm going to refer to this game for building in the future because so many good ideas it's so inspiring but um yeah i don't end up leaving this door i actually go back to the realm of magic door i used a lot of stuff from realm of magic i found the items from that pack actually suited the 1920s style and like the art style from the game really nicely and then i also used a lot of stuff from like vintage glamour and cottage living and also the um paranormal stuff pack there was lots of really good items from that and i just tried to get creative and really i just tried to capture the essence of the art style from june's journey because i think the art style is just really pretty and really inspiring i think also this build would work really nicely in willow creek if you guys want to move it there unfortunately there's no 64 by 64 lot in willow creek that's why i built it here in windenburg but the park lot is a 50 by 50 and then also one of the mansion lots is a 50 by 50 so you could probably remove some of like the landscaping and move it over to that world if you guys would like to because i think the whole new orleans style would match this 1920s style just really nicely even though this house is supposed to be set in new york i think willow creek would work but um i think windenburg also worked really well i was immediately drawn to this lot mostly because i wanted to build on a 64 by 64 because i wanted to have a lot of landscaping i knew i wanted to have a pond i wanted to have a garden shed i wanted to have a garden um, and lots of trees and just make it feel really nestled and kind of magical too you won't see it in the speed build but i added those little stumps that have the bunny rabbits and then also the trees that have the birds i felt like having those creatures and stuff roaming around the lot would actually add a little bit more of that kind of like 
kind of whimsical, magical feeling that I think the game has. And I think you can definitely recreate that in The Sims. And so I felt like that was a good way to do it. Um, here on this side of the build, I'm building this tower, which was definitely a very interesting and like striking piece to the exterior of the mansion. On the other side of the build, there's a diagonal piece in the like inspiration images and I did attempt building it diagonally you guys won't see it in this video because I did cut it out I spent hours and hours building this as you guys can probably tell the video is one of my longest speed builds but hopefully you guys are excited for that but yeah I I built it on a diagonal and the sims 4 is just so weird building diagonally like it distorts things and trying to place certain things just makes it look weird and so I built it on the regular grid so it's not an exact replica on this side of the build but I think it's very close and like I said I really just tried to capture the essence and do my best to recreate things but I ended up just loving this side of the house because there's a nice pathway that leads around it I used um, some benches and some statues that came from romantic garden and I feel like I've been using stuff from that pack a little bit more recently but I hadn't touched it in like so long but there's some really good items from that stuff pack and I hope stuff packs come back by the way we've been getting so many kits and I think it's been a year since we got the last stuff pack yeah I think paranormal stuff pack was like a year ago Maybe even over a year ago. Wasn't it like last January, I believe? Maybe February? <sighs> I think it's really sad. I love stuff packs. But anyways, I think the side of this house is super cute. Um, there's a pathway over here, like I mentioned, with a fountain and some benches. And then there's also, it leads into a couple of archways. One to the garden, um, like the actual garden that you can grow plants in. I used the large planter beds that came from Cottage Living and I planted some oversized vegetables in there so your sins can actually go through and harvest those if you would like to of course you could delete them and plant your own garden but it's fully stocked if you guys um if you guys want to use that and then there's also like an actual like yard sort of garden with a dining table and it's placed in the yard which i think is super cute i directly took that from one of those images that i was looking at and then there's a garden shed there's also another fountain over there lots of fountains in this build i don't think i've ever used so many fountains but in june's journey there's just like fountains everywhere and i think they're really pretty and i should honestly use them more often in like my regular builds and I'm just gonna have to and I'm also going to be using romantic garden more because those pillars that I just put on the side of the house is adding like extra decoration are for romantic garden and there's the most beautiful marble texture on them and I'm just like completely obsessed now and also the wallpaper that I'm using on the exterior of this build it came from the most recent pack which is my wedding story so in case you guys aren't recognizing it I also used the tea set the more like British style tea set from that pack too I used it like four times in this build no five times I used it once in the garden once in June's room once in the kitchen once in the living room and in the parlor room I think that's five <laughs> but I'm just completely obsessed that there's teapots now and they're functioning and they're so cute with the little tray that they sit on so you guys will see that when we move on to the interior but yeah so for the interior there is a entryway with like a grand staircase and kind of like this wraparound walkway area that leads to um, the office, the bedrooms, and then also a couple of balconies. And honestly, I only put two bedrooms in here, but if you wanted to add another bedroom, you easily could in like the office. And then also the back balcony is quite large. You could easily just add another room onto the back of the house, like very simply if you had like a larger family in mind for this build, or if you play along with the story and more characters develop within the game itself. I think that would be pretty cool, but yeah, so there is um, the entryway like I was talking about with like the grand staircase and there's a living room with a grand piano, which I absolutely love. In the images though, I noticed that the grand piano was in the dining room, but the way I did the floor plan, the, the dining room did not fit a grand piano. I'm really hoping that at some point we get a regular piano that's just like a standing piano. I like the grand pianos, they work in this type of build, but... We definitely need a regular one but anyways yeah so there's the living room there's the dining room there's a bathroom downstairs a pretty good sized kitchen I'm really in love with the kitchen in this build I think it's so cute and then there's like this kind of relaxing hangout sort of like parlor room that I think is super cute and then upstairs there's an office June's room Claire's room and then the hallways and two bathrooms there's also a walk-in closet in June's room that I thought was pretty cute and I'm really happy with the way that turned out so I'm very excited for you guys to see that room but anyways here I'm just kind of messing around with the back of the house I didn't have much to look at for the back of the home so I'm kind of just making this up and trying to 
like add windows and stuff that I think kind of match with the images that I'm looking at. And I think I did a pretty good job, but this is the balcony area that I was talking about that you could easily just make a little bit smaller and add another room here on the back of the house if you needed an extra bedroom. Um, you could also make like a maid's room, but there is a shed in the yard. Well, it's not so much of a shed. It's supposed to look more like just like a little garden house, but you could turn that into some like extra living quarters if you wanted to have like a butler suite or um, something like that. But yeah, here on the back of the house, I'm just adding some more decorations, some more pillars. And I used platform tools, by the way, to create all of the staircases on the exterior. And then I used um, the platform tool on the interior and it actually worked really nicely in this build. I'm noticing that there's not so many glitches with the platform tool like there used to be. It used to like shoot up <laughs> like to the highest possible setting sometimes randomly, but sometimes there's a few things that happen with staircases. I did notice in this build when I was play testing it that the Sims actually couldn't go upstairs and that turned out to be, well, two reasons. One of them had to do with the platform that was on the other side of the staircase, so I just had to lower that because it was just kind of one of those fill-in spaces like I like to do. And then another thing was just a decoration I had in the hallway, so that was easy to remove. But anyways, here on the exterior, I quickly made a pond. I'll go through and add a bunch of fish and like fireflies and swans and ducks and a bunch of like animals around the pond. Like the pond, I think is such a magical area. And then over here is the garden shed. I'm recreating a fountain that I saw in one of the images from June's journey. And I think this turned out like so beautifully. Um, I love like the ivy on the wall. It just feels so magical and cozy. And over here is where I end up having the outdoor dining table in like the grassy area with a nice big tree next to it. And that was directly taken from one of the inspiration images that I was looking at. Like I said, you guys, these images that you look for the hidden objects in June's journey, so inspiring. <laughs> so just just beautifully made. I'm just completely obsessed. But anyways, as for the fence surrounding the lot, I'm using a combination of half walls and a roof decoration that we have from base game that's in more of that like mission style. And then also a live edit objects fence that I sized up. I believe it's a base game fence, but I'm not exactly sure. But I thought the combination actually looked really pretty surrounding the lot. And then here I'm just creating a little like planter bed for this tree. This was something that I noticed from the inspiration images and I just love it with the table next to it. I do end up cluttering the top of the table with a few different decorations. You will might see in the video that I place a uh, picnic basket on the table, but when I went to go take the screenshots, I realized that I didn't place anything else there. So I added a couple of extra decorations that I thought kind of would add to just the overall look of the build, like kind of complement the art style and just sort of like the feeling and essence of the build. But yeah, over here is the pond. I'm trying to like recreate the pond that I saw in one of the images, but I felt like this little dock that we had looked way too run down and not as like cutesy as I wanted it to be. And the boat just felt kind of like overkill. So I ended up removing both of those, but I loved the bridge over the water. I thought this was super cute. It's not a functioning bridge, by the way. It's just a live edit objects fence. I think there's some tricks you could probably do to make it functional, but I don't exactly know how to do them. Um, but I felt like the look of it was just so perfect to not use. So um, yeah, I thought that looked really adorable. And then I also added a bunch of decorations to the pond, some lily pads and some ducks and swans and stuff. And then as for the landscaping around the build, I tried to make it feel really colorful and really um, just tried to match the art style of June's journey. And I think all of the like pops of color with the flowers just really complemented how colorful the interior is. And so, yeah, I'm just completely obsessed with the way I did the landscaping. And I feel like I haven't done a landscaping with a lot of different flowers in such a long time. So it was really refreshing and just like kind of a breath of fresh air for me for doing landscaping. Cause I feel like I get kind of stuck in ruts of doing the same landscaping over and over. And so I feel like this build really got me out of like my comfort zone and made me try some different stuff. And so I'm really, really happy with it. But Anyways, over here I'm using this weeping willow tree that we got from Cottage Living and over here I end up putting this bench that came from Romantic Garden stuff and then there's also this nice sort of like domed archway thing um, that's kind of like a decorative piece that came from that pack too and so I'll place that behind the bench and that's an item that I haven't used in such a long time but I felt like Romantic Garden just works so nicely here and then other than that for the landscaping I just placed a lot of trees around trying to place them in a way that I thought looked pretty but also nice and full. I wanted the mansion to feel really nestled here in the countryside and really feel like a grand estate and also a home that has been here a very long time. And like I've mentioned before, I feel like adding lots of trees makes a home feel really established. Like do you guys ever see like a new housing development 
and then there's just houses like placed on empty lots in like real life is what I'm talking about just empty like lots of land but the houses are just placed there and there's no trees or shrubbery and just they look so awkward and definitely you can tell that they're new and so I think a way to make a home feel like it's been here a long time at least in the sims 4 is to add lots of trees <laughs> and so uh, that's what i did here and i also added some flowers and stuff around in the more like grassy tree area i do end up removing some of those low-lying bushes that i'm sizing up just because some of them i felt like were a bit too much um, but here in the front of the build i wanted to create like a grand sort of like grassy area and i think a great way to accomplish this in the sims is with terrain paint and so I used two different colored grasses to create just a lined pattern in the grass. It kind of looks a little bit like crops maybe, but I think I think it makes it look like a well manicured lawn at the same time. And I think it just kind of matched the style of June's Journey really nicely too. And so I think it was a really nice effect and I'm really happy that I decided to do this because I think it looks so cute in The Sims. And unfortunately, I saved the build sometime around here actually i have one glitch with the terrain paint that you guys might see here in just a moment where all of the um the stone pathways that i painted that have like the missing grass switch to a bright green color like the same bright green that i use in the grass there it is i have never had that happen before it just like all poof changed for some weird reason and so i had to go back through and fix it and then at some point here soon i saved the game and left and came back in all of my terrain paint besides like the initial terrain paint that i painted was all gone so there's some weird glitch happening with terrain paint which is definitely not a new glitch i mean some of it seems a bit new i've never had it all just change on me before that was a bit strange but terrain paint disappearing when you come back into a game is definitely not a new glitch but um it's quite unfortunate because i had to go through and redo it um but i think i managed to make it look more or less exactly the same like it was before but Anyways, over here is going to be the garden like I was talking about. So these are the planter beds that came from Cottage Living. And I do go through and have my Sim plant like all of the oversized vegetables. So there's the um, like the pumpkins and the lettuce and the mushrooms and stuff and all of the other giant vegetables that came in that pack. Um, but yeah, I continue the landscaping over here on the... Um, grassy garden area and then here on the back of the build i'm just adding some more train paint and flowers surrounding the back of the lot too i'm really happy that i decided to use the open fence mostly on the back of the build because originally i was trying to place half walls and it just made the back of the house feel very closed off but having the open fence just leaves such a nice view of like the mountains and like the houses back here in windenburg so i'm really pleased with the way that turned out and then over here, I played around with like a few ideas of adding some like planter boxes and stuff. But since there's already the garden area, I didn't think planter boxes were totally necessary. So I just did a couple of uh, just a little bit more landscaping. And then over here on this side of the build, I really wanted to use this fountain that came from Romantic Garden stuff. But I couldn't exactly make it work on this side of the build. But placing it in the actual pond itself worked really nicely. Um, so I just placed this base game fountain over here. And there's some benches. And then I end up placing... Um, a couple of statues on the exterior too. And then also something that I ended up doing, the um, fountain that I had originally at the very start of the build, you can see it now, I layered it with that fountain at the front of the build. <laughs> so the one that I ended up placing second was I think from Realm of Magic, but I had originally the one that came from Romantic Garden there. But at some point when I was placing the flooring and stuff, it disappeared and I never placed it again until I was a kind of messing around with a few things. And I think layering them together actually made a grander looking fountain. And plus the one from Romantic Garden is actually interactable. And the one that I had there is not. So they're merged together. If if that makes sense. Um, but anyways, here I'm moving on to the interior. The first room that I'm decorating is the living room. And this one, I had a beautiful image to look at from June's journey. And I really tried my best to capture like the layout of the furniture and just like the overall essence. Of course, I didn't have like a floor plan to look at. So you guys won't see the floor plan like come together in the speed build as you guys could probably tell i already skipped over it but i will have a close-up version at the very end i always have floor plan screenshots at the very end of my videos in case you guys don't stay towards the end <laughs> but they're always there for you guys to look at so you guys can see how the whole house comes together for any build but this one specifically i zoomed in a little bit closer to the actual house itself because usually i just do like the same perspective for the overall like lot so you guys can see 
like the landscaping so for this one there's a zoomed out version where you can see the, like the overall landscaping and everything in the house in the center but then i zoomed in closer so you guys can actually see how the house came together since it's not in the actual speed build portion but yeah in here i really wanted to create a round coffee table i tried sizing down like a regular dining table that was round but it didn't it didn't look that good and plus objects will snap to the original height of the dining table. So it wasn't really working out the way I wanted to. So what I ended up doing is actually using a base game coffee table and then just layering a few of them together and making it have kind of a rounded appearance. And so I think this worked so much better and this is definitely a trick that I've done before in a lot of different builds, but it's so effective because we don't have a round dining table or a round coffee table. We have one, it came from, I think my first pet stuff. It has like a fish tank in the center of it, which is super cool. It's very unique and it's appropriate for certain builds, not for this build though. And so I think doing the trick that I did worked a lot better. And on the table, I just add like a few decorations. Also one of the teapot sets, like I was talking about, I have uh, one here. I think I changed the swatch of this one, but yeah, I just think this room turned out to be so cute. And like I was saying, I don't think I ever would have decorated a home this way, but thankfully June's journey like art style was so inspiring, like I was saying, that I think the combination of furniture that I ended up using was just so unique, but it has so much character and I think it looks so good in The Sims. Like that couch came from, uh, it came from Get Famous, the chairs came from the Paranormal Stuff pack, and then these bookcases, I Thing came from Discover University. I might be wrong about that. And then this is a base game piano. And like I was saying, the piano in the images that I was looking at was in the dining room, but it fit perfectly here in the living room. That's just kind of how the floor plan worked out. Um, but I'm really pleased with that. Here I'm just adding some decorations to these shelves, trying to make it feel cluttered and fully decorated and all that kind of stuff. That painting that I just added on the wall came from Get Together and I wanted to mention it because I also used the same painting, maybe in like a different swatch or something, but above the fireplace and then I merged a mirror into it and I wasn't sure if it was going to work with this painting because I've only ever done it before with the one that came from Vampire, so like really large painting. That one works perfectly with that mirror that I used, um, but it also works with that painting too. So I'm really pleased with the way that turned out because that was something that I directly took from one of the images. Um, something that I should probably mention about the images, they're extremely detailed. Like the art style in June's journey has so many like little knickknacks and decorations that I think tell so much of a story in their own, even though of course you're like following a story. I think they're just they're so detailed i tried to capture some of that in the sims but of course adding too much clutter like that can be really heavy especially on a build this size so i tried to pull it back a little bit because even with my computer which is a fairly decent one having too much decorations would cause like like lighting glitches i've noticed so yeah i tried to tone it back but i still think it like captures it this is the parlor room this was one of my favorite rooms to decorate i think it turned like to be so cute and it's just like a nice little like hangout room there's a fireplace in here there's a chess table in here there's also a uh, a violin and then just a seating area with a coffee table this coffee table also came from the get famous pack i was surprised how much stuff i used from get famous i like never touched those items but they actually worked really nicely in here i think maybe even this wallpaper that i'm using in this room came from that pack too correct me if i'm wrong but anyways over here i'm placing the chess table which i think looks really adorable over here and then I'm just adding decorations and trying to find items that are functioning. Another tea set, I'm completely obsessed with them. Um, but yeah, I decided that it would be nice to have an art easel over by the pond. I felt like this would be a perfect spot for your Sims to get some painting done. It just, I think is just a really beautiful spot. And so I just felt like that was another activity to add for your Sims to have something to do. Um, these wall lights actually came from the Paranormal Stuff Pack and I felt like they suited this style perfectly. Um, I also added a cross stitching box in here just to add another activity and then there I just added a violin and I have it to where it looks like it's leaning against the chair because that's something that I noticed in one of uh, the images that I was looking at from the parlor room and then here I'm just finding some clutter pieces to put on top of the coffee table trying to add to that like kind of cluttered art style that June's journey has um, and then over here, I'm just finding some paintings to put along the wall. These recolors, so this base game painting actually worked pretty perfectly. And the one I have above the um, fireplace over here is supposed to be a family portrait. Of course, it's just two Sims in this painting, but the image from June's Journey does have like a family portrait. So we can pretend that there's more people in this painting, I guess. Unfortunately, we didn't have one that was identical to it, but this one actually worked pretty nicely in the overall like, 
I think design of it was pretty close to the one that I was looking at from June's journey. Um, but yeah, here I'm cluttering the top of the fireplace with a few decorations. Um, I have this statue here originally, it came from vampires, but I ended up removing it and placing this base game statue instead. I felt like it worked a little bit better for the style, even though I really like the statues from vampires. Um, and then I also have this nice little decoration that we got recently in an update that has like the fire poker and the little broom and shovel and stuff to clean up the fireplace. I think I placed one next to every fireplace in this build and there's four fireplaces, I believe. Um, but yeah, over here, it's going to be the dining room. So in here, like I was saying, there's supposed to be a piano, but there just wasn't enough space. And I felt like it was more important to have a grand dining table. And so that's what I went for instead. And I used this base game table along with these base game chairs. And I think the combination of them just worked so nicely for like matching the art style from June's journey. There's also another fireplace in here. The fireplace that I'm using in this build, by the way, came from the paranormal stuff pack, I believe. Um, but I use it every single time. So um, yeah, here I'm trying to place a piano. They're just too big, so don't do it. And the curtains came from the My Wedding Stories pack and I felt like they worked perfectly in here. Um, and then other than that, over here, I place a couple of like china cabinets and they're just plain base game ones, but I size them up to fit in the space a little bit better. And I feel like that worked really nicely and I'm using the tool mod to size them up. So they're not sized up like as drastically as they would be by using the, like, the bracket keys. And then on the the other side of the room over here in this corner this cabinet came from the realm of magic pack so technically the items inside of it are supposed to be like potions and stuff but I felt like it looked really cute in here and I hardly ever use like the furniture from that pack at least like the big sort of like potiony cabinets but I felt like it actually suited the style of June's journey and like the house and everything really nicely um, and then here I'm just cluttering up the top of the dining table with a bunch of different decorations this was definitely something that I took from looking at the inspiration images and then I also clutter up the top of the fireplace in here with a few different decorations and then you'll also notice that I place a bench I used the one that came from realm of magic and I place it along the windows but I end up removing it later on because I found the um, the stereo that came from Get Famous and the style of it worked perfect for this sort of build. I think the actual style of it is probably a little bit more mid-century than 1920s, but it has a record player, so it just works so much better. Um, and then over here, I'm trying to find a chair that suits um, this corner. I really liked this, like the overall style of this one that came from Get Famous, but the swatches just did not work. They were a bit too crazy. I, I don't know, I couldn't find one that worked. So I used this high back chair that came from Cats and Dogs and I felt like that worked a lot nicer. And then over here you can see I'm finding this bench and placing it along the windows. And then I also have a couple of plants. I used that same plant from base game like over and over throughout the build. I wanted to use a couple of different plants that we have, but the other ones I was trying to use have way too like modern of pots. And I felt like it kind of took too much away from like the 1920s feel that this build has. So yeah, that's what I decided to do. And then here I'm just adding a few decorations in the hallway. I had no references of hallways, so they're pretty simply decorated, but I tried to make them match the style. I also had no references for the bathrooms, but I think I made the bathrooms work. I ended up using this nice marble flooring that we have from base game. The toilet came from vampires. And then the sink that I use came from Cottage Living. And yeah, also the chandelier in here came from Cottage Living. Um, and then the wallpaper came from, I believe, Realm of Magic, if I'm remembering correctly. But yeah, I think this bathroom turned out to be super cute. It's pretty simply decorated. The bathrooms aren't super cluttered, but I more wanted them to be like functional, but also matching the build. And I feel like I feel like they definitely do. I'm really happy with the combination of colors that I used in not only the bathrooms, but like the rest of the builds. Like I think the combination of the different wallpapers with the furniture colors, I think are so fun. And like I said, so unique. Like I've never made a build that looks like this. So I'm really, really excited about it. Um, yeah, over here is going to be the entryway. So that platform that was causing a problem with the staircase um, is just to the left of the staircase from the view right here. So that's what I was talking about um, that I had to change. Not too big of a deal, but yeah, it's just a little bit of a fix. Um, over here is going to be just some like uh, storage. <laughs> Basically, I just use some walk-in closets from Get Together just to fill in the space and also to give your Sims something else to do. There's also another one in the hallway. Um, but in here, I basically just added entryway items. I remembered this time about the thermostat <laughs> that came from Seasons. I've been talking about recently trying to remember that item as well as the vacuums. But of course, this is the 1920s, so 
I didn't think that was too appropriate to use. But anyways, yeah, that was it for the entryway. Um, it's not as cluttered as the inspiration images, but I felt like the entryway in The Sims would be more appropriate to be a little bit simpler. Um, that way I didn't block your Sims actually getting in the house <laughs> because of course um, we have to think about routing and stuff. But yeah, over here is going to be the kitchen. I think this kitchen is so unique to any kitchen I've ever built. I of course was looking at a beautiful painting from June's journey to uh, create this kitchen. I tried recreating some aspects from the inspiration image, like I used brick and also green cabinets. They're not as bright green as the ones from June's journey. These ones are more of like a teal green color but I felt like the color of them was just so pretty not to use especially in combination with the brick and the wallpaper that I'm using in here this wallpaper came from the paranormal stuff pack by the way I do not use this wallpaper enough it's so beautiful some of the colors are a bit dramatic like I think there's a yellow swatch and like uh, maybe a red swatch or something that are very bright but these turquoisey ones are so so pretty and then the flooring that I'm using in here is actually from Strangerville and it has lots of stains and scuffs on it and I was kind of surprised that I liked it so much I when I first placed it I thought I was going to get rid of it and use a different flooring but I felt like it made the kitchen feel really old and I don't know just like it's been here a long time and I really wanted this house to feel like it was a really old home and so I thought that was pretty cool um, and then here in the island I have the kitchen sink and a really large island that was definitely something that I took away from the inspiration images and then there's a little like kitchen table in here um, to eat your breakfast or whatever um, and then here I'm just picking out some curtains to place on these windows these windows I believe came from romantic garden if I'm remembering correctly. I used them a few different times um, throughout the build and then also I think a lot of the other windows that I used came from Discovery University. I used like stuff from every single pack like this was so much fun trying to like go through and look at the different packs and really trying to capture the art style of June's journey and I think I don't know I think I was successful you guys are gonna have to let me know in the comments what you guys think about this house and I don't know if I captured its essence. I think I did. I'm really proud of it. I'm really I'm really pleased with it but anyways over here on the kitchen table I add yet another teapot and then a few different decorations I do go through the debug menu trying to find items for the kitchen just to make it feel more fully decorated and just lived in and a little bit messy like I wanted the kitchen to feel like well used um, and I think adding decorations on top of the kitchen table really add to that effect the way I end up placing the dining table though in here ends up blocking the kitchen sink when I was play testing it my sim couldn't get to the sink so I do rotate the table just slightly um, so you might notice that in the screenshots um, but yeah other than that I just add a few more decorations here on top of uh, the island over here I'm adding a broom from realm of magic and then I also add um, just like a painting this one that came from cottage living I felt like was pretty appropriate to have here in the kitchen and then over here by the stove I do add a few other decorations and I also used this cabinet that came from the country kitchen kit but I liked the plates <laughs> and then I also placed some uh, uh, aprons on the wall so I thought that was pretty cute you won't see it in the speed build but when I was taking the screenshots I thought that they should have a food bowl for a dog because I noticed in some of the art images from June's journey I saw a dog and like a few of the pictures so um, yeah I would definitely add a dog to the household over here I'm using this cabinet that came from I believe jungle adventure but yeah I'm just adding some decorations some stuff from the country kitchen kit and a few decorations these bottles came from the my wedding stories pack and they have like notes and stuff in them and I felt like even though they're supposed to be love letters we could like pretend that they're clues for solving the mystery in June's journey <laughs> at least that's what I was thinking so I thought that was kind of a fun idea um, and then over here I just add like a few more clutter items some books and another teapot this family definitely likes tea I've realized um, I always think it's funny I've mentioned this recently in a build but I always place like the uh, the teapot that we have from base game and now that we have the tea set from my wedding stories and that teapot from cottage living like I always give my sims tea stuff and I never drink tea in real life like I drink iced tea occasionally if I'm like out at a restaurant or something usually I'll order it but at home I drink coffee obsessively but I never give my sims coffee pots it's always teapots um, but I definitely didn't want to give 
this house a coffee pot because they weren't very time appropriate but the teapots definitely work but in here I did remove the second chandelier that I had so this room is a bit darker now but I do end up adding the very tiny lights that we have from base game that add like a lot of light um, but I do size it down and dim it just a little bit because I didn't want it to be like bright in here but it was a bit too dark only having one chandelier and having two chandeliers made it feel a bit too busy and so that's what I ended up doing. Um, anyways, over here is going to be the like walkway leading to the bedrooms and everything. In here, I do add a few decorations, but the hallway is a little bit narrow. And so I tried placing a corner shelf in here, um, but it does block your Sims from accessing you know the hallways that lead to the bedroom so i do delete it um it's not that big of a change but you can just see it there at the right of the staircase um it's the only difference really like i said i did have to lower the platform on the other side of the staircase but that was the only object actually blocking your sims up here um and then these are the hallways leading to the bedroom so like i was saying there's june's bedroom there's also claire's bedroom this is the childhood home that june grew up in and since her sister was murdered um her daughter is actually staying in her room now which might be a bit morbid but that's what I decided to go for and how I decided to decorate the build. Um, so she's staying in that room and then there's June's room, which is like the master suite of the build. Uh, technically, I think she would probably used to have the office when she was growing up here. At least that's kind of like the story I'm giving it because she probably doesn't have the master bedroom because she doesn't um she wasn't living here but she did move back here and so maybe she took it over or something but uh that's how i decorated it. over here is going to be the office and the office i think turned out to be so cute super cluttered but full of lots of different activities if you want your sims to actually use the desk then you'll want to place an actual chair at the desk but i decided to use just regular like lounge chairs because i felt like they just looked cuter and they definitely matched the art style to the images and stuff that i was looking at a lot more more. But basically in here I just tried to add lots of books, lots of decorations. I also put a dartboard in here and then just a little like reading nook. Here I'm trying to find a side table or something to put in between these bookcases to make them look a little bit more built in, but I couldn't find anything. So what I end up doing is just placing um, a couple of statue decorations in between them. And I think it breaks them up and makes them feel like they actually belong here because when I first placed them I felt like I wanted them to look built into the actual house, but they just didn't have that feeling because there was nothing in between them. But I think the statues kind of make it feel that way. But um, yeah, so there's two desks in here. One is just like, uh, I guess, I don't know, just a regular sitting table desk. I don't know what you would call this one, but the other one is supposed to be like an actual formal roll top desk. And that's what's over here by the dartboard. And over there I do use the decoration that we have from base game that's just like the open book like a journal sort of thing um, it's non-functioning though but it does have the writing and it has a pen and stuff so it looked more age appropriate of course there's no like tablet or computer in this build um, but you can place one of course because they're very useful in the sims we do have the typewriter computer though maybe I should have used that but it does have the modern screen on it I would I would recommend placing that one if you actually wanted your sims to have a computer because it looks more appropriate, but it does have like the screen. I wish it was just a regular typewriter. That would have been way cool. Even if it had like the same interactions or most of the same interactions like a computer does, I think that would have been so handy to have in The Sims, especially for more like storytelling purposes or if you guys like to play like the decades challenge or something, I think this house would be perfect for that challenge. So yeah, that's it for the office. And then over here is going to be Virginia's room. And so I was looking at an inspiration image from June's journey of uh, Virginia's bedroom and I tried to capture it mostly trying to make it look, you know, kind of similar to the room. It's not as cluttered as the image was originally because there's no way your Sims would be able to use it. And I did want this build to be functional, but I think it's so cute and I never would have used this bed in this room, but I think it really just like makes the room <laughs> it like makes it for me along with this vanity the vanity came from vintage glamour and i think it just works perfectly in here i also use another one in june's room and then i use this necklace sort of um statue decoration that came from base game i thought this worked pretty perfectly in here and then there's just a dresser there's also an ensuite bathroom in here both of the bathrooms upstairs are en suites that's just kind of how the floor plan worked out um, and yeah, over here I'm just cluttering up the top of the vanity, adding different decorations and artwork and things that I just thought kind of suited the style and looked good in the room. And I think it's just so cute. Like 
I'm really pleased with the way this room turned out. And then I also end up using another painting that came from the Paranormal Stuff Pack. Um, I completely forgot about this painting. I think I placed one uh, first in the office, but then I remembered it. And so I placed um, these other ones with the portraits a couple of different times in the build, but the style of them is perfect for like this whole like 1920s theme. Um, but yeah, over here, I wanted to add this bookcase, but it was way too big for the room. So I just have this room divider and then I put a laundry basket um, with some towels and then a wall light. And then over here, I'm finding a painting to put over here. I use this one with the map. I did end up having to move things around a little bit just to fit everything in the bathroom. Um, the bathroom and the shower and tub combo came from vampires. And then the sink is the same one that I used downstairs that came from Cottage Living. I really wanted to place this plant, but the planter was just way too modern, and so I didn't end up doing that. Um, but yeah, here in the bathroom, it's very simply decorated, just like standard bathroom items, but it's so small, and I didn't think a lot of the decorations that we had would really work um, for the look that I was going for, so that's what I decided to do. And then over here is going to be June's room. So in here, I really wanted to add another fireplace because I was, of course, looking at another inspiration image from June's journey, and I noticed there was a fireplace also a blue bed and it looked like a red rug I believe or maybe red carpet but I had already used hardwood floors throughout the entire build so I wanted to continue with that and then over here next to the fireplace I place another teapot on a table <laughs> like I am probably gonna uh, yeah I'm probably gonna use those probably way too much but they're such a good object. And then I used a, another high back chair that came from Cats and Dogs. In here, I decided to make the swatch of the fireplace white instead of the brown color that I'd been using in the rest of the build. And that was directly taken from uh, one of the inspiration images that I was looking at from June's bedroom. So I felt like that was pretty appropriate. Um, and then over here, I'm using another vanity. Um, of course, this one is more functional because I actually put a chair snap to it. The other one I used a stool. So if you want the other vanity to be functional, then you'll want to actually put a chair next to it. But the stool matched the inspiration image, so I couldn't help myself. But yeah, in here, I love the way I decorated the top of the vanity, and then I put a couple of side tables next to the bed. I kind of struggled finding what side tables I wanted to use because all of them are so big. <laughs> so it's kind of frustrating, but I actually ended up using these ones that came from uh, the Courtyard Oasis kit. So the style of them probably isn't like exactly on point with the rest of the build, but I I don't know, the sizes of them worked perfectly for side tables instead of coffee tables. But yeah, over here is going to be June's bathroom and it's very similar to the rest of the bathrooms in the build. A little bit more clutter decorations than the other bathroom, but this one was a little bit bigger. And I put this shelf above it. I believe the shelf is casting a shadow on the bathtub for some weird reason. I've never noticed that shadow happen before on this bathtub, so I think that's what's happening. Um, but over here is going to be a walk-in closet. I am obsessed with this walk-in closet. I think it's so cute, and I think the clothes from Dream Home Decorator actually worked so nice in here. Um, but yeah, I think this room is so cute. I hid the shelves that the clothes are hanging from with those cabinets that came from vampires. And I also used the, I think just the bracket keys to sli size them down. That way they're hidden within the cabinets. And then I have a trunk over here and I put some suitcases. The suitcase um, set came from uh, City Living and it's actually a side table technically. And it's the same decoration that I end up putting on the car out front. But yeah, that's it for the entire interior. Here on the balcony, I put a couple of Live Edit Objects plants decorations and then an outdoor dining table. Just this simple metal one I thought worked perfectly. I believe it came from Get Together, um, but the style of it I thought was really nice. And I also put one over here on this balcony. I thought about adding some like lounge chairs or something, but the style of lounge chairs that we have in game, I didn't think were style appropriate. The closest ones were from the um, My Wedding Stories pack, but they still looked a little bit too modern. So I decided not to too, but this is the balcony that I was talking about where you could easily add another room if you needed an extra bedroom or another room for whatever reason. So that's what I would recommend. Um, but yeah, over here is the garden shed. So you could easily turn this into like a little butler house or something like that. But in here, I basically just tried to make it feel more like a garden shed. I put some woodworking tables in here. There's also um, a couple of trash cans. I put a flower arranging table in here and then mostly just decorative items. I used these um, counters and cabinets that came from country, uh, the country kitchen kit. Um, and I felt like they worked pretty nice in here. Unfortunately, most of the overhead cabinets come with like kitchen related items. So I only used uh, these ones that have like the roll top on them. But 
yeah, I felt like that worked pretty nicely. And then just this base game wall decoration that works pretty well in garages. And then over here, I'm adding these. These are bookcases, but the decorations on them kind of look more like miscellaneous, just like clutter that you might find in like a storage place or a garage. And I felt like they just worked really nice in here. But yeah, I also end up going into the live edit objects and debug menu from Cottage Living to add decorations because there's so many good items from that pack that work really nicely in garden sheds. There's also some uh, debug items that I used from base game that worked really nicely in here too, like these gardening related things. And basically I just tried to find stuff that looked age appropriate like it would belong in a 1920s house and just kind of suited the style and theme of the build and i'm just really pleased with the way it turned out so i'm hoping you guys are going to like it as much as i do and hopefully you guys like this house definitely let me know what you guys think and don't forget to download june's journey i can highly recommend it like i said it's a very inspiring beautiful game and you guys can download it for free in the description of this video on both android and ios so definitely check that out in the description and yeah this is pretty much it for the build i'm just going to add that luggage like i was talking about here on the top of the car which i am so happy with this detail i think it looks so so cute and then i add another dining table over by the garden but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and please leave any comments or suggestions you have and i'll talk to you guys soon bye
and how to get your way. Useful tricks, once you get the taste of it, you lay all the bricks higher and higher.